So happy Christmas again, everyone. Happy Christmas. On this fourth day of Christmas, I hope you're still feeling the childlike wonder, the childlike excitement of Christmas Eve. How many people are still feeling the Christmas Eve excitement? Woo, not so much. <laughs> Tom is like, all right, Tom is with me. I hope you're feeling the wonder and excitement that Anna and Simeon express when they lay eyes on Mary and Joseph's 40-day-old baby. How can you not be excited about a 40-day-old baby? I hope you're feeling the wonder and excitement that is newborn baby life. What is it about babies that melt many of us on the inside? When we bring a baby up here up front for a baptism, what makes us smile. When you guys see this one dancing around, or any of them dancing around and jumping around and answering questions with such great wisdom, like where do those answers come from? Why do we feel warm? Why do we feel hopeful? What is it about babies that makes us feel brand new, makes us imagine and long for second and third chances? And what is it about babies at the Sandy Hook School, babies caught in that recent massacre in Pakistan that horrifies us when they get hurt. I imagine the 40-day-old baby Jesus, so young that he probably had no idea yet of who he was or what was expected of him. I imagine him nursing and sleeping. I imagine him burping and cooing and other things that babies do. There is much in a 40-day-old baby that is fresh and hopeful and full of possibilities. There is much in a 40-day-old baby that points to our own freshness, our own hope, our own possibility. And I think that's why we feel warm. That's why we smile. That's why we're horrified when babies are hurt. Today's text reminds us that the joy of Christmas, the joy of human living, has its roots in a baby, has its roots in all that is fresh and hopeful and full of possibility. It's about the baby. We, like Anna and Simeon, long to touch the baby and all that the baby promises. Anna and Simeon were at the ends of their lives when they encountered the baby Jesus. They had lived many years in the ongoing Christmas Eve-like excitement, eagerly anticipating the baby who would be the consolation of Israel, the Lord's Messiah, God's salvation. Luke writes that Simeon was looking forward, and when he and Anna saw the baby, they praised God. They praised God for all in the baby that was fresh and hopeful and full of possibility. Not so much for themselves, because they had less life ahead of them, perhaps, than they had behind them but praising God for the fulfillment of a promise to touch this baby and all that this baby represented. Sometimes you just need to touch freshness. You just need to touch hope. You just need to lay your eyes on possibility. The gift this baby brought Anna and Simeon is the gift that Chad touched upon in the message for all ages. It's the gift that babies bring us all the time the gift that Christmas is truly about. The baby brings what we long for, what we're after when we give the gifts that we give. The baby brings what manufacturers are marketing, but they will never be able to capture. The baby brings a gift that keeps us in Christmas Eve-like wonder and excitement all our lives long. Nothing else will do it. And you know nothing else will do it when Simeon, ready to die, says, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace. 
the baby brings peace. It's about the baby. Baby Jesus was born into a reality, however, that was anything but fresh, hopeful, or full of possibility. The same could be said of many people the world over, and perhaps the same thing could be said of many of us in the sanctuary this morning. In the midst of oppressive realities, we might be tempted to look towards many things that promise what only the baby can bring, but we would be severely disappointed, perhaps have been severely disappointed, because it's about the baby. Jesus, a Palestinian Jew, was born into a world that did not love him, a world that was in fact literally slaughtering those like him, Hebrew boys. If you are female, you may relate. If you are a person of color, you may relate. If you are a person who's gay, bisexual, or transgender, you might relate. If you are poor, differently abled, Muslim, Middle Eastern, or in any other way unloved in the world you find yourself in, you may relate to baby Jesus, a Palestinian Jew born into a world that did not love him. Anna and Simeon were at the end of their lives. Lives lived under the oppression of the Roman Empire, lives of heavy taxation, lives of subjugation, lives of harsh rule, and yet they were looking forward it's about this baby. In the midst of a reality that could be anti-fresh, anti-hope and anti-possibility, Anna and Simeon held on to the promise of a Messiah that came in the body of a 40-day-old baby. Fresh, hopeful, and full of possibilities. Christmas is about a baby. It is appropriate in many ways that the text for this first Sunday of Christmas is the presentation of the baby Jesus at the temple. It's as if the text, with its very placement after December 25th, wants us to take notice, to be reminded, to pause and focus on this baby. There are only five or six stories in the entire Bible about Jesus as a baby or child. Christmas is about this baby. Now you might say given the current state of affairs, given your own particular reality, that freshness and hope and possibility are a bit too Pollyanna, a bit too optimistic. Given the current state of affairs, you might say, Pastor, where is the freshness in our understanding of gun control when we are averaging one school shooting every five weeks? Where's the hope in Ferguson and New York when unarmed teens are killed by police officers? 14 more since Mike Brown died, half of them black. Where are the possibilities for the gospel of love, period, that we preach week in and week out at Middle Church? And I would say, those are great questions. Those are important questions. And the gospel of Luke, that comes to us after December 25th, that comes to us perhaps after our longings have gone unfulfilled yet another year. The gospel of Luke comes on the first Sunday of Christmas to remind us that a Palestinian Jewish baby boy was born into a world that did not love him, a world that was killing boys like him, but he came anyway to embody freshness in spite of empire and oppression to embody hope 
in the face of evil and violence, to embody possibility in the middle of our feeble attempts to love, period. This baby stands up to the shadows that would make us fearful just with his very baby presence, with no notion of baby power. This baby inspires the praise that says love has the final say with no notion of his baby power. And this baby reminds us also of our power, our freshness, our hope, our possibility. And with the days we have before us, this new year that we have before us, This baby calls us to begin what theologian Howard Thurman called the work of Christmas. A wonderful poem by Thurman. And in the work of Christmas, he writes, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers, to make music in the heart. Christmas is about this baby. Christmas means standing on the side of all that is fresh and hopeful and full of possibility, even if the reality says otherwise. And so my prayer for you, Middle Church, is that Christmas and all that the baby inspires in your life will live in your hearts all year long as you go about doing God's loving, baby-powered work. Happy Christmas, and to God be the glory. Amen.